Stacey Dash was once one of the most beloved figures in Black Hollywood, but she eventually got blacklisted by the same community that uplifted her. This is a timeline of Stacey Dash's demise. Stacey is a bit of a media hoe. Um, I don't feel anything for Stacey for those kinds of comments because she absolutely puts the struggle way back. Stacey Dash started her career in show business as a teenager in the early 1980s. Her first appearance was in the 1982 NBC television crime drama titled, Feral for the People. She appeared on The Cosby Show in 1985 and in 1988, the show TV 101. She got her first major film role in the Richard Pryor comedy, Moving, in 1988. In the early 1990s, she got her first starring roles in the films, Mo Money and Renaissance Man. She also had a minor role in The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air in 1994. But her breakout role as Dion Davenport came in the 1995 teen comedy film, Clueless. And E.T. was on the high school set with Alicia Silverstone and the rest of the young cast. Hey, baby, what's hey, up? Wait for me. Ah, oh, as if. This is the funniest take on life. High school life. I think it's incredible that there's this huge screen here and that we're, you know, we're all of, all on the beach. I, I mean, the sand is in my shoes. Hey, I'm Stacy Dash and I'm in Clueless. I play Dion and this is Paul Rudd. The film developed a strong cult following after its release and she went on to start in the movie's UPN spin-off series in 1996, which ran all the way until 1999. In the 2000s, she mainly starred in black films and TV shows and played the love interest in hip hop and R&B music videos, including Carl Thomas's video for Emotional, All Falls Down by Kanye West, and Marcus Houston's video for Favorite Girl. She was one of Black Hollywood's hottest figures and graced the covers of Black-oriented magazines like King, Smooth, and Jet Magazine. By 2009, she had a recurring role on the television series The Game, and in 2011, Stacey landed a starring role in VH1's first scripted series, Single Ladies, playing the role of Val. The series started off strong with nearly 2 million viewers per episode and developed a strong fan base. But the YBF gossip site exclusively reported in May 2011 that there was tension behind the scenes between Stacey Dash and her co-star Lisa Ray McCoy. An anonymous actress on the show told the YBF that Stacey had been a nightmare to work with and that the two ladies almost came to blows on set after Stacey put her hand in Lisa Ray's face. The ladies then resorted to sticking petty notes on each other's trailers. The source said, I have always been a fan of Stacey Dash, but after being on set and seeing Stacey, I have to say, beauty means nothing after seeing how she acts. She's antisocial and mean. She doesn't speak to anyone, and as soon as the scene is done, she immediately takes off to her trailer until the next take. I think she's a good actress, but who knew her personality was so horrible? Last night, she and Lisa Ray got into it big time, end quote. Another source also told Us Weekly magazine that the outburst was unexpected and unprovoked. They said, it was an intimate dinner party scene, so everyone was in cocktail dresses. Stacy was screaming and running around in thousand dollar Louboutins. The source went on to say that Stacy refused to come back to set unless Lisa Ray got her behind kicked. And of course, we all remember Lisa Ray detailing the incident in an episode of TV One's Uncensored. I don't know to this day why she was stuck on stupid with that. I just don't know. But take after take, she would never deliver the line the way that they wanted to. So we took a break. And we took a break. I walked over to her and said, Stacey, just do the line the way she wants you to do it so we can get up out of here. And she put her finger up in, in, in my face. And she said, you don't tell me anything. And you can hear a pin drop on the set. Because when I tell you every bit of Southside Chicago was brewing up in here, that made me go, Stacy, if you don't get your 
thing out my face, but that was all I had to say. <laughs> because once I said that, she took off and made a beeline to her dressing room, but I was gonna be right behind her because I couldn't take my shoes off that quick. So I was like, wait a minute, hold on. Wait one second, here I come. <laughs> and they was like, no, no, no. It was like, okay, I thought maybe she had wanted to talk to me in private. And I was gonna grant her that. Stacy eventually announced her departure from the series after one season, claiming it's due to family reasons, which everyone kind of knew wasn't really the case. But her demise didn't start there. In 2012, Stacy Dash rebranded herself as a conservative right-wing commentator. In October that year, during the presidential election, Stacy endorsed Republican candidate Mitt Romney, who was running against President Barack Obama. She tweeted a photo of herself posing in front of an American flag while wearing a red bathing suit. The message on the photo read, Vote for Romney, the only choice for your future. That's really funny because back in 2008, Stacey supported Obama's campaign for president, but says she turned a new leaf because she felt like he didn't do anything for black people. And of course, intense backlash came her way with people calling her a sellout. But Stacey didn't stop there. She started making anti-black and anti-feminist comments. Luckily for her, her views landed her a job at the conservative news channel at Fox News as a contributor for cultural analysis and commentary in 2014. Later in the year, she admitted to Edit Magazine that her family stopped talking to her because of her political views. She said, My family and I have not spoken. My cousin Damon and my brother were role models to me because they were great capitalists. Now we're not really talking because they were the ones who told me to keep my mouth shut. She continued to criticize Obama and called African Americans in Louisiana who voted for him freeloaders suffering from plantation mentality who don't work. In January 2015, she drew outrage for calling University of Virginia ridiculous for their decision to ban frat parties because of the ongoing abuse and assault against women attending the parties. Stacey called the victims bad girls who like to be naughty. She later apologized in a Facebook post and said she's a victim herself. A month later, she criticized Patricia Arquette's Oscar acceptance speech, calling for equal pay for women across the US. Stacey suggested that women were to blame for their pay discrepancies because they weren't good negotiators and that women should just work harder. I, I, I was appalled. I could not believe it. I mean, first of all, Patricia Arquette needs to do her history. In 1963, Kennedy passed an equal pay law. It's still in effect. I didn't get the memo that I didn't have any rights. Um, and then everyone else, I just, I agree with Mr. Trump. I miss the glamour, the elegance, the class, the, ma the majesty of the Oscars. You know, I'm an actress. Mm -hmm. I've dreamed about it my whole life and it just seems to be going away. Later in the year, she was temporarily suspended by Fox News after cursing during a rant about President Barack Obama. During Oscar season a year later in 2016, the Academy nominations were widely criticized for their lack of diversity, which resulted in the Oscar so white hashtag. She called the movement ludicrous, proposing that the solution would be to get rid of BET, the NAACP, and Black History Month if we want integration. She also said that BET lies to black American people. We have to make up our minds. Either we want to have segregation or integration. And if we don't want segregation, then we need to get rid of channels like BET and the BET Awards and the Image Awards, where you're only awarded if you're black. If it were the other way around, we would be up in arms. It's a double standard. So you say there shouldn't be a BET channel? No. I don't think so, no. Just like there shouldn't be a Black History Month. You know, we're Americans, period, that's it. Are you saying there shouldn't be a Black History Month because there isn't a White History Month? Exactly, exactly. A month later, she allowed Chris Rock to use her for a punchline at the ceremony. And it was extremely cringeworthy. I cannot wait to help my people out. Happy Black History Month. <laughs> Thank you. That summer, during a discussion with Entertainment Tonight about bathroom laws involving transgender people, Stacy claimed that she shouldn't have to suffer because trans folks, quote unquote, can't decide what they want to be that day. 
and went on to say that trans folks should use the bushes to use the bathroom when they're out in public. You also call out Caitlyn Jenner. Yeah. But she she's a conservative. Yeah. Yeah. But I think I think that, you know, she's saying she wants to go into the woman's bathroom. She's a woman now. Go into the woman's bathroom. But why? It's a tyranny by the minority. Why do I have to suffer? Because you can't decide what you want to be that day. But is it a decision? <laughs> I, I would think so. It's your body. So it's your decision, right? We all have we all make choices. I guess a lot of people in the transgender community would then say, it is who I am, and yes. I don't choose to be one way or another. It's who I am. Okay, then go go to the bushes. I don't know what to tell you, <laughs> <Go> but to <laughs> I'm not gonna put my child's life at risk because you wanna change a law so that you can be comfortable with your beliefs. Which in January 2017, Stacy was fired as a contributor from Fox News. The year over, Stacy ran for election to the U.S. House to represent California's 44th Congressional District. But a month later, she dropped out, claiming that she couldn't take the bitterness surrounding politics, which is very interesting coming from her. But anyway, Stacy has since been blacklisted from Black Hollywood, and she's sort of stayed out of the public eye since then besides her highly publicized divorce and getting arrested for a domestic dispute with her estranged husband. Second, I don't know why she had to do a photo shoot in a Baywatch red swimsuit with the boobs and the whole flag behind her. And she doesn't have a job or something to promote right now. I just didn't get it. So, um, to each his own, and she's entitled to her opinion, but it was just surprising that she... Fox News, don't try and use me as a pawn against Oprah and in any of your political games. And Stacey Dash, keep my name out of your mouth. Do not retweet, requote anything I have said in order to reinforce your self-hating agenda. You live in the sunken place. You really want me to tell you what I make of that? Absolutely, Somebody needs yeah. to slap the little bit of black she got on her, <laughs> off of her, okay? The little bit of black she got on her, off of her, because girlfriend has worked on BET more than most actresses have. Mm -hmm. And I think she's just saying this kind of bull because she wants sensationalism and she's working for Fox. Mm -hmm. And she needs a job and she's making a check. And she's bringing controversy to herself. Stacey is a bit of a media hoe. Um, I don't feel anything for Stacey for those kinds of comments because she absolutely puts the struggle way back. Way back. It's just rude and wrong. So I don't know where she is. It's, it, it's like her head is, Stacey, just dash some way. Just dash away. Dash away, honey. She has since withdrawn her support from the former president and says that she's going to give the new sitting president a chance. In March 2021, Stacey told the Daily Mail in an interview that she was done being the angry conservative black woman and apologized for her past offensive comments, but still says she's not a feminist. I've lived my life being angry. You know, I'm, which was what I was on Fox News. You know, I was the angry conservative black woman. And at that time in my life, it was uh, who I was. And I realized in 2016 that anger is unsustainable and it will destroy you. And you know, what people don't know is that I made a lot of mistakes. And because of that anger. In other words, being used as a pawn wasn't making her money anymore. Of course, everyone is free to support whatever political party they choose, but Stacey Dash publicly made offensive comments towards Black people and Black culture for monetary gain. The same community that uplifted her and gave her jobs when the rest of Hollywood was done with her. Do you guys forgive Stacey Dash? Or is she just trying to get back in our good graces because she can't find work? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and like this video and subscribe to Black Femininity TV for more content.